Hello, friends. So last few days, uh, the correction in NASDAQ has been a uh, little bit brutal. And I think the correction in India and will the markets recover? Slowly, the discussions have changed in terms of, you know, where the NASDAQ will be, what the NASDAQ will do, what will happen to, you know, recession, the US economy and all. So now discussions are more global rather than, you know, domestic in terms of the correction. So I thought, why not to look at NASDAQ and uh, let us try to understand uh, where NASDAQ is. And uh, this morning, I made a tweet. I will try to get into details of tweet, try to explain in detail. And I'm not uh, so strong when it comes to macroeconomics. So I still rely more on fundamental, technical and quants to understand a sense of the attractiveness of market the probability is in favor and that is how I try to act, uh, you know, though I try to learn more about the macroeconomics. So we will use the NASDAQ last 45 years of NASDAQ chart to understand uh, where NASDAQ is right now and what are the probabilities of risk reward being in favor. So let's start. So this was the tweet I made and I have covered uh, three, four things. One, the drawdown. Second, uh, RSI as a metric and trying to understand history and attractiveness and third taking moving averages as a history. So let me highlight a uh, key point. So first point when we look in terms of drawdown and right now I'm looking from 2020. So if we look from 2020, uh, sorry, 2000, if we look from 2000, uh, the worst drawdown NASDAQ saw since 2000 till now was in 2000-2001 where NASDAQ NASDAQ went through a 77% drawdown from the top. And the second worst drawdown came in 2008 when NASDAQ went through a 55% drawdown. Keeping these two drawdowns aside, currently NASDAQ, the current drawdown which we are having is the third worst drawdown at around 34, 35%. And the COVID drawdown was around 31%. So in last 22 years, this is the third worst drawdown, but you know, much worse can happen here. But one question is why did NASDAQ fell this much, almost 77%. And if we go into the history, uh, many of you would have heard about dot-com bubble that companies were you know, obnoxiously priced. And right now in 2020, we heard about a lot of FinTech companies, a lot of next-gen companies, data companies, analytics companies, gene therapy companies, uh, which are, you know, uh, not making profit and available at 30, 40, 50 times price to sales ratio. Uh, in fact, to analyze one such Indian company, Zomato, which I told why it should not be trading below tomato prices, I went and I took example of some of the US companies like DoDash, which were talking uh, trading at obnoxious valuation and they corrected. So fact is there is, a, of course, there is some similarity between a 2000 market versus current market to NASDAQ, uh, where if I can give you an example, oh, all of us, we know Microsoft and all of us regard Microsoft as a great company. Uh, but I don't know how many of you know that Microsoft took almost 16 years to cross the 2000 price. And the reason being in 2000, 2001, Microsoft was available at almost 30 times price to sales ratio. Uh, so, you know, the kind of 20, 30, 40 times price to sales ratio it's not new uh, in 2021 itself. It was there in 2020 itself. The companies have changed. And when Microsoft had that kind of price, I'm taking Microsoft, that is just an example. There were many companies which were, you know, obnoxiously priced. And it took them eight to 16 years to get back to that kind of valuation. If I talk about the Indian scenario and Indian dot-com bubble, uh, the best of the companies, Infosys was available at 100 plus P and it took Infosys almost six, seven years to cross that price despite of growing at you know 30 to 50% kind of growth rate. So of course there is some similarity, but not all the companies, especially if we talk about the, you know, the FANG companies already, the Facebook meta is available at 12, 13 times, Google is available around 19, 20 times. So if we compare current market with respect to 2000, uh, there are pockets of bubble and loss making new gen companies, but the old cash flow companies, they are nowhere close to that kind of valuation. So that is just a comparison in terms of where we are in terms of 2000 versus now. The reason why I'm highlighting all of this is because I see the worst case scenarios can happen because of two things, super overvaluation and some big macroeconomics goof up. So we'll see more of it. Let's get back to the chart. Now, apart from drawdown, let us look at one key metric, which is uh, 
uh, RSI. And let me shift this chart to a monthly chart. Now, what is interesting is, and let me highlight it. Uh, in one of my tweets, I have spoken about the importance of uh, monthly RSI 14 value of 50. Uh, it's like a boundary where I feel the world is very different below 50 and above 50. And why I highlight is, uh, let us go back to NASDAQ chart right from you know 1975. And let me highlight how many times the RSI 50. So this is the RSI, this is the monthly chart. And let me highlight how many times RSI came and got support at a 50 level and how many times it breached it. So if you see uh, how many times it has got support and how many times it has breached, let's go a little further. Let's go from almost 1975-76. So if we talk in terms of support, uh, this is one time and let me just change the color. color. So one time and then two time, three time, four time, five time, six time, seven time, eight time, nine time, 10, 11, 12. So almost 12 times in last 47 years during times of major correction, this monthly RSI 50 came handle, handy. And you can see there was a fall and then you had a good run up. There was a fall, you had a decent run up. Fall, little bit of correction, and then you had a big run up fall and then decent run up. So whenever it touched 50 and bounced back, people made decent money. And there were occasions when this was broken. And let me highlight when this was broken. Uh, this was one event. And let me again change the color. One time, two time, three, four, five. And this is the sixth one. So almost 18 times it came near 50 and out of 18, 12 times it has support, got support and six times it has broken. But even when uh, it broke this 50 level, you can see even if somebody invested, whether you know it has broken or not, if you would have invested somewhere here with little bit of six month to one year uh, you know, wait, uh, one would have got decent run up. Same thing happened here, same thing happened here. But 2008, one, uh, you know, the market where this is sorry, this is 2000, even if you invested below it, it took market almost 10, 12 years to break these levels. So 2000 was a period where, uh, you know, just investing below RSI monthly 50 level would not have generated wealth. And the reason I highlighted that was because of sheer overvaluation and bubble in the, you know, in the uh, dot com based stocks. And in 2008, though you had a fall, if you would have waited for one, two years, again, you have made decent money. So if somebody and given today, we are again below RSI 50. So out of the 18 times, this is one time where big well destruction would have happened despite investing below it. But 17 out of 18 times, one would have ended up creating wealth if he was patient for max one to one and a half years. So the reason I'm highlighting it is, uh, what is the probability that this kind of event can happen? So again, the worst things can happen. It might happen, but I'm trying to just highlight the probabilities. Uh, the economic, uh, you know, macroeconomic based corrections or recessions which have happened, they have also happened. But if people invested at those lows, still, I think they were able to make money. This was another, you know, kind of tough period, the 84 to 88 period where you can see Almost between 83 to 88, NASDAQ gave zero return. But again, here, if you would have invested at these kind of, you know, lower points, uh, one would have not lost money and, uh, you know, still uh, he, would, he was relatively far better. This was the only market where if you invested at peak of dot-com bubble, you didn't make money. So RSI was one metric where we see at least 16 out of 18 times the history has been favorable. But the question is, can those two out of 18 times can repeat and we need to study and you know we need to take decision accordingly. The other important metric let me show is the 50 month exponential moving average. So this black line which you see is this line is uh, sorry 40 month exponential moving average. And again if you look at the significance of this level let me again go and highlight. So let me again first show how many times it acted as a support. So right from 
1976 and again let me change the color so this is one time this two time three time four time five times six times this was a kind of major bull market and you know when we have a major bull market going on high momentum going on just to see if we have covered all the time frames let's come this side and the way to take is not exactly 40 month moving average but even if you know it is around that line and within a month next month if it has gone above i am assuming that that 40 month moving average has come handy and we get three more and then again we get here we get here uh, we get some here we get here we get here okay yeah and how many times it has breached let's see how many times it has breached the 40 month moving average so if we look at the history this is like you know one time and uh, this is the second time this is the third time and currently we can assume this is the fourth time it has breached so now if we look at this 40 month moving average as a data point we can see almost 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 13 times it has support got support around this moving average maybe with a one month of lag where this month it was down but the next month closing was above this line and how many times did it break that was like one time and there is one more time let me highlight it here so one two three four and two, this time is the fifth time and all these occasions somebody who purchased here made decent amount of money and uh, this period again it was little painful period so again we go back get back the same insight that 2000 of dot com bubble and 1986 was a painful period where here we didn't lose a lot of money if we invested at RSI below 50. Uh, but here we did lose money. But these were the two periods where after breaking, you know, uh, it created much bigger pain and else uh, and the 2008 also. So the, these were the three times. Now the thing is currently NASDAQ is again at the same juncture where it has broken this particular 40 month moving average line. And I would still say I would like to wait for one more month and see where the next month closing is happening. Are we going back in terms of a positive closing above this line or are we going to go down further? If we are going to go down further, then maybe this kind of scenario can repeat. Uh, I don't know. I'm still I'm trying to study. I don't see a very good uh, similarity between dot com bubble because I think those kind of valuations uh, versus now, I don't think there's big similarity. Of course, there is similarity between the next gen companies and they have already corrected by 60 to 80 percent. I mean, you take the, you know, uh, uh, Shopify and, you know, all those kind of companies, the gene therapy companies and the snowflakes and all of that. So already 60, 70 percent correction has happened. But if we are expecting similar kind of correction in, you know, Google's and Amazon's, I, I would be a little surprised because uh, that means you will be getting Google at, you know, 12, 13 times P. Uh, so I would be a little surprised. So I would consider more closer in terms of worst case scenario. I would consider this type of scenario playing out more compared to this kind of scenario. But let us wait and let us see, you know, uh, in terms of moving average, how things are moving and how next one month of data shapes up on NASDAQ. So I hope that, you know, this kind of exercise was useful to think in terms of probability and we have not taken, you know, eight, 10 years of data because one general query was, you know, in last 12, 13 years, NASDAQ has not gone through any kind of massive correction. So using that kind of data will not reveal anything one time, you know, kind of, uh, you know, extreme scenario. But here we are taking 47 years of data and the assumption is, uh, you know, worst of the economic macroeconomic crisis, worst of the valuation crisis, everything would have happened in this 47 years. And still we see that, uh, you know, the, we are at levels where history says that risk reward is more in favor buying things from here in a staggered manner. Uh, maybe the worst case situation could be two, three years. We may not go anywhere. Uh, you know, a good returns may not come, but uh, if we leverage some of these levels with little bit of technical tracking, uh, we might even the worst might be something which is okay for us. Chances are there in the next three, four, five years, we might be looking at, you know, decent return if we, you know, invest through next, you know, uh, eight, 10, 12, 24 months of period. 
So let's see how does it go and let's see how it impacts the Indian market. I have been making videos about the Indian market, about some of the quants metric to get a sense of market. Are we, you know, uh, how attractive we are, how attractive could be investing and I will continue to make, you know, similar kind of videos. Uh, let me know if you like this video and let me know if you'd like me to make a video more on uh, fundamentals of what has happened in NASDAQ or, you know, US market in 1986 during that time or in 2000 time. I'll be happy to do it. Thank you.